Welcome to the narrowboat that James built. I hope you're well. Thank you very much for joining me. Well, last time you'll have seen that it's all about setting up the water system in the bow. Um, the tank is in. Well, it's not kind of properly in, but it's 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 on the boat, the new tank. Um, all the other bits I've got. So it's now a case of yeah installing the water system. Just dry. I'm not going to fill the tank yet because there's, there's a little bit of welding to be done just to support the tank. But I can get it all set up in the meantime and then run the cave, run the pipe work all the way down to the galley um, because obviously getting the getting the water in um, and means I can just get the pipe work all laid out um, it means I can start fitting out the bathroom as well so it's a really important part, part to get to get sorted uh, the electrics are kind of happening around the same kind of time it's all kind of going in together um and but you know that's just the way it is i can't just do one thing at a time it's all got to be kind of simultaneous but at the moment it's uh all about the plumbing right so here is the most further front part of the bow and you'll see i have rather crudely made up a platform for some of the bits and pieces to sit in and Obviously the backing, you've seen that being put on. So the plan is now I'm going to set up in a dry way um, the various bits that need to go on this platform and see if I can get the arrangement right. The outlet for the tank is going to be here. Well, actually, it's going to be about here. Um, there's actually going to be quite a big gap between the tank and this area here. That is going to be a locker that well there's going to be quite a bit of pipe work in, in fairness to kind of hide but also that is going to be a locker for fenders and things like that so in terms of where i want the bits the pipe work's all going to be going down the starboard side so at the end of the system here is this guy the accumulator tank so ideally he wants to be on the starboard side so, and it comes with a couple of little kind of stands like this. Um, so they get mounted to the base plate. And he can sit in there like that. As I said, I've got a lot of room at the front. I've probably got, I don't know, 250 mil gap here between this and the side of the water tank. Water tank comes up to about here, so it's well going to cover this, but I don't want... The, this can be omnidirectional, so this can kind of be positioned in any way. I've got to say, it doesn't really want to sit on those things very, very well. Maybe they need to be right in the centre. Mm. Um, but yeah, this can be fitted anyway, So and it's got a couple of straps that you kind of strap it down with. Stop that moving. And then feeding into that is the water pump. Um, that obviously has gone in and an out. Right, that's the in, that's the out. So obviously the out needs to be in line with that guy there. So you don't want to have things curling around for no reason. So that can be in line with that. And then before him, we've got the pump guard. So the pump guard could possibly sit like that there's a gap there for the pipe to come up so that's going to need an elbow going down there but that could work or I could have them all kind of laid out like that that would help people who have got OCD wouldn't it if they're all kind of perpendicular I could mount that flush on the wall but there's two ways of doing it. You can either have it vertically or horizontally. And I just think, surely there's less work for the pump to do if it's flat, rather than requiring gravity to do more stuff. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is better to be installed upside down, who knows? But anyway, I'm gonna install that flat. And then the conduit will run up that side there, the 12 volt. That's the only thing out of all these three gubbins here this pump is the only one that requires any, any power. 
many people have commented on previous videos and it's something I'm definitely going to do is to have a tray underneath these things to catch any uh, any any water that comes out I can already see from the pump there's already some water coming out of it so I presume that's from the testing phase of the pump when it left the factory so there's still a bit of residual water in there but all of the actual fittings that on these will actually overhang this bit of wood and it will sit down here and my tray can be at the bottom of that to collect any any water that comes out. So the first thing I need to do is to get a male to go into this female outlet from the water tank. Okay. That's the fella. Well, let's see if it is. So let's get that in there. I'll tighten that up later and I'll find out how tight that needs to be. Right now there is a that's a 22 and I've got a valve to go from between here and the pump guard. So this is the stop valve and it's a 15 mil and that's a 22 so I need a reducer. And here is said reducer. You can see there it says 22 to 15 reducer. As I said, I've never used this stuff before. Um, this is the John Guest Speed Fit. Uh, I just got this from Wix, but you can get it from Screw Fix and loads of places. Um, it's meant to be really straightforward to use. As I said, I've never used it before, but I've, I've watched a channel called Christine and the Boys. And in there, he gives really good explanation. Obviously, he's pretty experienced in this stuff. He's given a really good explanation as to how this stuff works. So I've given, I've got a bit of confidence um, in what I'm doing. Uh, so basically, how it works is, and they're all kind of similar in their setup, you've got a nut here on a thread, and that locks the, the fitting into place. And there's a collet here. That's a bit there, that wiggly bit. It's called a collet. Now, if you open, this is basically if you unlock it, you're able to kind of get your nails in there and, he says, and pull the collet out. And if you actually unscrew the nut any further, you can take the nut off and in there, you'll see two kind of oval ones and rubber O-ring and the other one is uh, some kind of piece of grey plastic. Anyway, so you put that nut back on, put the collet back into place, and once that's tightened, it is done. Okay, so this is the Jabsco Parmax 2.9 12 volt water pump. You can get different, um, you can get a 1.9 and a 2.9. I think it's basically the flow. Yeah, this is 11 litres per minute. <laughs> Nearly made a major error. So actually, this here is going to be the input and this one is the outlet. So this side goes to the accumulator tank. So now I've kind of got them in the wrong position. Right, so... The accumulator tank needs, it's got a three quarter male output. So I need to put a three quarter female on with a flexible hose, reinforced. I might upgrade this one to a similar one like that, but um, for the moment, this. That will do. Now that needs a T on the end of it because one, one end is going to go to the bathroom and the galley and the other end obviously comes from the pump. So I need my bag of teas. Aha. Uh -huh. So I need a piece of pipe. Whenever you put in a new piece of pipe, you've got to put these super seal tube supports in there. 
it just gives a bit more protection, I guess, for the water. Um, you can just get tube supports without the two O-rings on them, but I've got super seal ones. So that's it, that's the little guy. So at the end of the tube, what we're doing is just putting that in there, pushing it in. It just gives a end there. And then again, keep that open, push it in until you hear it click. That's that bit done. Tighten it up. And now that is going nowhere. And then do the same on the other end. There, they are both pushed in. And that is not coming apart now. Okay, so the pump is connected to the accumulator tank. And the idea is that these will, the accumulator tank's not, in, well, nothing's really in position yet. But the idea is those two hoses will fall down like that. And then this hose here will go to the pump guard. So I've had to re rejig things a bit just for the kind of the flow. I didn't want things, I didn't want spaghetti junction here. I just wanted it to be to fairly, fairly straightforward. And then from that T there, that's where the cold water feed will go back round the back of the tank and down the starboard wall. I've now got to fit this stop valve in line on the bottom of the tank. So I need two bits of pipe. One, I want the I want this to be really accessible. So this is going to be the closest point. Um, so this is going to be kind of really quite close to the to the uh, to the tank because there's going to be a little access point there. So I'll do a short bit of cut for that one. And obviously I need to put in the two super seal supports. You got to buy a lot of those. There's ten in a back in a packet for those. I think you probably get bigger bags. So put them in. Um, push that in until you hear it click. And again, the same at the bottom of the tank. And then tighten that one up. So here is the stop valve on the side of the tank and a piece of pipe is going to go from there round the back into the pump guard. But uh, I'm pretty happy with how this has gone in the first bit. First time I've used these speed fit system, looks really good, really easy really foolproof so um yeah that's good so uh, thank you so much for watching i hope this has been useful uh, if you've got a water system on board or you're thinking about putting one in obviously i've just gone for the full jabsco range um i thought i'd keep it all the same but there are other makes sure flows another one but um yeah so hope this has been useful or beneficial in some way Please, if you've got any comments or tips about what I'm about to do next, then uh, please leave them down below and I will do my best to get back to them. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye bye.